the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody, God bless you. Hey, I hope you had a great, hope you had a great week, a weekend, and I hope you're going to have a great week coming up. And I just want to continue to, we're going to continue to focus on uh, teaching the Word of God and, and making sure that we don't get into or trap into uh, the steal, kill, and destroy that the system always wants us to do, you know? Uh, we need to sit there and focus on what God wants us to do, what the Word of God has asked us to do. Because we, you know, religion has really, and, and the people have really jacked up uh, and manipulated the, the scriptures uh, and, and deceived many of us to think that we're doing the right thing by doing, thinking us to do the right thing even though we do the wrong thing. Opposing the fact is that we need to do the right thing by following what the Word of God tells us to do, to do His will. I sit there and had this um, title today because I, I will sit there instead of calling somebody, just because somebody calls us a Christian, I, I will sit there and say that the non believers based on the fruits that they bear. And the title I have a non believer is using Christianity as a cover to steal, kill, and destroy. And I think a lot of people have been manipulated to steal, kill, and destroy because of their unwillingness to just read the word of God for themselves. You are New Testament saints. You're not Old Testament saints. So you are supposed to follow Christ. And the question is, all the expectations and all the colonization and all the lynching and all the discrimination and all the hate crime and all that other stuff, are those things based on non-believers using Christianity as a cover? A non-believer is simple as this. You can profess yourself as a Christ, as a Christian, but if you're not doing the, what the Word of God says, what the Word of God, not the opinion of others, but what the Word of God says, then it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can call yourself a Christian all day long. But a tree is known by its fruit. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're talking about the history. And we're going to use more history as, as well. We're going to use modern day. We even talked about the, the shooting in, in uh, Jacksonville uh, on the 26th of August. This day is the 27th. The, the 26th of August is a, a man went into, a young man too. That means he was taught. He was, he was molded to, to be able to hate people just because of the mere color of their skin. To steal, kill, and destroy and I guarantee you, I bet you if you take his, 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 uh, his when they come out with his background, I guarantee you he will call himself a Christian or been raised in a Christian family. Because I, a lot of people go to church, but they don't do the will of the Father. They don't do the will of Christ. They don't follow Christ. His commandments love one another. They don't want to be led by the Holy Spirit. They want to be led by their flesh. And we need to recognize that we just asking people, if you're not going to be a Christian, stop calling yourself a Christian. If you're not going to be a Christian, stop trying to close yourself as a Christian. And then do bad things. Because the only Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Christ comes to give life and life more abundantly. We're supposed to be ambassadors of Christ. And that's one of the things I wanted to be able to share with you on the, the, the foundational scripture for this study today is the fact that, that you are supposed to be ambassador for Christ. That's who you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be reconciling the world together, not trying to turn them apart. Not sitting there trying to, 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 to manipulate people and exploit people. Do what the Word says, amen? Look at the scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, 14. For the love of Christ constrained us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that we die for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. 
Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after flesh, yo though we have known Christ after flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. And to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has given and have committed to us the word of reconciliation. That's why you can't have Christian nationalists, because that means you're trying to sit there and think that we stop somewhere. No, well, we, we're supposed to reconcile the world unto God. We're supposed to be ambassador of Christ. He said, verse 20, so now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you and Christ stand be reconciled unto God. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteous of God in him. Those are scriptures used when we use some historical data, we're going to use some historical pictures of hate and all that other stuff that is not supposed to be in the fruits of a Christian. You're supposed to love one another, bear good fruit. Amen? Hey, I hope you enjoy the session. I will break these up in A, B, C, and D. Don't forget to subscribe if you get a chance. Leave a comment if you can. But just remember, Yeshua, Jesus is Lord, and we do what he wants us to do. Hope you enjoyed this session coming up, and uh, I'll see you when I see you. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Let's go. Because you're not, you're not, you, I know ministries, family members have taught people to do contrary to the doctrine. And I know that people sit there and allow politics to be interwoven with the gospel. But the problem is that when you insert things that contradict the gospel, the will of the Father, that means you're no longer in the will of the Father. Christ no longer knows you because you're not conforming to his image. You're for conforming to the image of the world. You conform to the image of your political party, your political system. You conform to a ministry that may not, if a ministry is not, if Christ is not the foundation in a ministry, if, if Christ is not pointed to in ministry, if you're not Pointed to do the will of the Father, the Word of God, the lead of the Holy Spirit. If you're not pointed to do those things, if you're pointed to steal, kill, and destroy, and when we talk about somebody who said, oh, I don't steal, I don't, I'm not a racist. If you endorse or if you actually practice discriminating against people, hating people, manipulating people, using people, exploiting people, or if you're watching those things happen to people and you endorsing those things and you sitting there saying, how do you sit there and reconcile that with the word of God? You know, I, I, I like the, I like the, the, the fight against, uh, I, I, how do I think, oh, a fight against abortion. It makes sense, right? But when you sit there and just stay with the conception and then endorse the killing and the stealing, the manipulation, the discrimination, you you moved away from you 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 no longer on the foundation because you left the your foundation is a life cycle from conception to grave. But if you don't do that. If you don't sit there and, and, and include the whole thing, you 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 what what do you you think you you're gonna to go to heaven because you only focus on the conception? Wow. I just we've been manipulated, many of us, over and over again. Sit there and you get to people say, well, you know, the Bible is just you just got to make interpretation. What do, just, why don't just read it for a sound and see what, what interpretation. Because how do you leave from loving one another? 
and come to the interpretation of hate, or steal, or kill, or destroy, or discriminate against other people. Where, 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 where do you find that in the scripture? What do you find in the scriptures that it's okay for you not to forgive? When he told you to forgive. Somebody said they had to walk in the word world and say, I don't know, the worlds. It doesn't matter what any worlds that you want to call it. Some of you deal with that. I don't know, some of you have probably heard that, but there's some people say they think about worlds without the end. Every world that you're in must, you must act according to the will of the Father. You, 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 are you really going to come with hope? The minute you said they get stuck on the like, oh, the club, oh, I can slip up the curse. Those things can be addressed, but the steal, the kill and destroy, oh, you no, you, you're outside the will of the Father. Those who don't want to forgive, you outside the will of the Father. <laughs> Christ is in, you know, that, that 15 said, but if you forgive men that not their trespass, neither will your Father have to forgive your trespasses. And if you're all about trying to manipulate somebody else and get mad because they went and they turned back on you. You know, I was looking at an article today about Zimbabwe and how the fact is how the... Uh, <laughs> The people try to, to uh, uh, how would you say, they try to, they got mad because they, the people of Zimbabwe took back their land. And then they said they hate. But yet the hate was the fact that you would allow them to, to, to prosper with you. You, would, you know, they didn't allow them to, to uh, enjoy the fruit of the land that they took, that they were on before you came. Exploitation, <laughs> manipulation. Uh -huh. You still gotta ask the father, so repent. That's the whole point too. All I think we're doing is that you can repent. That's, that's, that's okay to repent. God wants you to repent. Uh, you, you have hope all the way to the cross, to, the, to, to death, to repent. But don't sit there and say, well, Lord, I, 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 I tempted you to repent until the last minute. And sit there and say, oh, God, God's still good with you. God knows your heart. But if you truly repent, you truly repent. But you can sit there and you sit there and plan your repentance. And sit there and say, I'm going to manipulate and hurt and steal and kill and everybody else. That, that, you know, uh, uh, you, you can't lie to him. He looks at the heart of man, not the... Not the uh, Anything else? You know, Galatians 5, 16 said, This I say, then walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one to another. So you cannot do the thing that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not of the law. Now the works of the flesh, now the works of the flesh, people, now the works of the flesh, a manifest with the needs, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, barriers, immolation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envying, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and such like I tell you before, and also told you in time past, that they would do such things shall not, shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. <laughs> Did you see those things? And if you come from a ministry, come from a family, come from yourself, operating on those works of the flesh, you need to understand you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, do we all got to work on these things? Yes, but I'm telling you, I'm, you shouldn't have to be working on murder. You shouldn't be working on those things that steal, kill, and destroy. You should be working on things where, hey, I made a mistake. Hey, look, I slipped up a curse. Let me work on that. Oh, let me, let me talk about the fact is that, oh, I, I didn't mean to, I, look, you shouldn't be stealing. You, in case of this, I didn't mean to steal from you, but you, that, that's what happened, right? 
How many land, how many people, how many homes, how many families have been uh, stolen from? From people. How many of the things that are working in the flesh are you guilty of? And, uh, and you're not even working on those things. Then who's Lord in your life? <laughs> Think about it. Who's Lord in your life if you're not working on those things for the work of the flesh? Those things we just read. Who, who's Lord in your life? If you allow those things to be leading and guiding you through life, who's Lord in your life? Huh? Who's Lord in your life? All those things that you feel that you can do, does that allow you to still kill and destroy? Does it allow you to still kill and destroy? Who are, who Lord in your life? Huh? Who's Lord in your life? If, if you allow those things, to, to happen. Who's Lord in your life? Because that's why we got to work on Him. Not us, but Him. Amen? Uh, and that's what I, I just want to be able to, to make sure that we stay focused on His will being done in our life. Amen? His will. Because if we don't do His will, then then, then we're going to be off track. And I'm, I'm telling you that His will must be done in our life. His will. Because verse 22 and 23 say, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such as the law. I don't see where you find exploitation, discrimination. I don't see where you find killing in here. And that those, the 22 and 23, I see love, I see joy, I see peace, I see long suffering, which is patience, gentleness, I see goodness, faith, I see meekness, I see temperance, which is self control. But if you did the stealing, that's not in here. If you did the killing, and I'm talking about some people done some serious killing. And manipulation of people. Uh, ooh, good Lord, man. I, like I said, I can see why you want to buy books and all that other stuff. Or bad them, excuse me. It's, really? Look at the commandments, 10 commandments. Since those who want to be 10 commandments saints, those who want to be Hebrews and go into the promised land, and you, you forgot the fact that he actually did define the promised land. He already told them why he rolled those, he wanted to run those people out. How did all of a sudden, all of a sudden, that becomes a, an excuse for empire building? To take somebody else's land. It didn't. That's just a lie. Look at this. These are the, the first part of the Ten Commandments about the relationship between you and God. You need to have Him first in your life. Here I'm just talking about for us, our relationship between one another. He said in Exodus 20, verse 12, Honor thy father and mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Huh? Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Look at this sixth thing that God hate. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, some of abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imagination. Feet that be swift and run into mischief, and false men that speak his lie, and he that so discord among their brethren. What part of the doctrine in the Old Testament that you're supposed to not do? What part of that is 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 telling you? to steal, kill, and destroy. What promised land, when all of a sudden did the promised land 
it has, 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 has expanded outside. And then even the, the, the children of Israel had to do the will of the Father. What he commanded to do. What, what are you doing? What, I, I, I know you didn't think that the exploitation of other people. I know you didn't think that the killing of other people. I know you didn't think that the lynching of other people. I know you didn't think about being false witness against other people. I know you didn't think of discrimination and everything else is part of the will of the Father. I know you didn't think that. I know you didn't think that even the children of Israel supposed to be when they went into the promised land was to be able to operate contrary to the commandments of God. Hmm? Oh, help you. <laughs> help yourself in understanding that you're not supposed to do the steal, kill, and destroy under your own, what you call it, selfish reason. The children of Israel, they fell because they didn't stay within the commandments of God. What, what's, if you're a Christian, you're not under the Ten Commandments. You are under the leading of the Holy Spirit. And you know that the Holy Spirit did not teach you to do that. And you and then ministers, oh, you're gonna all be judged, but then you all be teachers. And if you sit there and teach people to steal, kill, and destroy. And then parents are teaching their children to steal, kill, and destroy. We're talking generation and generation of, 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 of manipulation and all these other things. Somewhere along the line, you got to realize, get a clue. You are supposed to do the will of the Father. You're supposed to bear good fruit. And if you don't bear good fruit, he never know you. He never knew you. You walk away and you sit there and you know you're doing. Most of you sitting there know that you're doing what you're doing for selfish reasons and for vain glory. And you got to change, people. You have to change. Don't, don't, don't do what the will of God says, not the will of man, because it matters. Now, I got an article here, and I put on the, on this, on the, on the, uh, on this other side of the slides, uh, different atrocities that man have done to, to include the recent one they did in Mrs. I mean uh, Jacksonville, Florida, uh, where they actually did some shooting. But the article itself is what I'm going to read. This article is called "The Opinion." Uh, it said the church after the sin of colonization, because we need to understand people are watching what we do, the history of life. You see, if you sit there and talk about the children of Israel and how bad they did, you know, are we any better? Are some of you, in, excuse me, are some of you even better? And are some of you even Christians anyway? Because if Christ our Lord, then how, how can you call yourself a Christian? Right? You just got to ask that question. But let's read this out. Because I thought it was interesting and, and it really did cover a lot of things I think about sometimes. So I wanted, I wanted to see what you think about this. Like I said, the church after the sin of colonization. This guy is from, uh, I can't pronounce his name, but uh, Lazel, uh, H, well, it's on the slide, H-O-E-L-D-T-K-E. Uh, and then it was written sometime in 22. But I put those slides more than with historical accounts. You can look at those slides to the left. But here, let's read the article. And the article was about four or five slides. So I'm just reading and letting you look at the slides to the left as to say, wow, yeah, that is bad history. Uh, and, and don't think Christ is going to confess that I knew you. And a lot of you said, man, I, 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 I want to have that swimming pool. I want that, that almighty money. What profit is a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What would a man give in exchange for his soul? That's the whole point. They don't look at the hand and say, mad and no, no. <laughs> Let the word, you better deal with the word of God, not deal with people. All right? So look at this article. I thought it was very good. 
Hey, everybody, God bless you. I hope you enjoyed that session. I hope you will stick around and listen to the other session. We're trying to bring them out daily. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we'll send it, send it out to the people on my distribution list on the, te on the uh, text. But the rest of you will do, we'll see it on YouTube as well as uh, Facebook. Uh, but take a look at this study. Chew on it. Yes, we have a history. We, as believers, but we call ourselves believers. And there's people who pretend to be believers have done some very bad things and manipulated a lot of people. A lot of people didn't know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, some of the slides there before all the way back to the third century uh, CE of, of being a, a militaristic type of organization. And, and, and all that stuff has been passed on from generation to generation. And, and the sad thing about it, most believers, you don't read the scriptures. You listen to somebody else and, and you sit there and make your decision based on what somebody else is saying instead of reading the scripture for yourself. I'm encouraging you, read the New Testament. You must be, if you call yourself a Christian, you need to read the New Testament to see what Christ taught you. You, could, you want to be conforming to the image of His Son, God's Son, Christ. Amen. You, that's what the scriptures say. Let's read the scriptures. Let's stop sitting there and let other people tell us what the scriptures say. And then we are doing bad things. We know we're doing bad things. We know we're doing the steal, the kill, and destroy. We know that. So why don't we learn to do what the Father taught us to do through Christ? Let us learn to be led by the Holy Spirit. That's what the, this session is all about. It's, it's, it's not about banning or hiding history. It's about repenting. Because that's what we can do. We can repent. We can let our light shine. And I, and I encourage us, all of us, to do that. Let our light shine. Let us do the thing that is acceptable to the will of the Father. Let's do the Lord's Prayer every day so we can remind ourselves of doing His will, not our own will. Amen? God loves you. He really does. And it doesn't whether you're a believer or not a believer. He wants you to be reconciled to him. Not to people, not to ministries, but to him. And that's all I encourage you to do too. Reconcile yourself to God. Get that spirituality of being who he wants you to be instead of what the world wants you to be. Stop being manipulated. And start understanding the truth. But the truth will make you free. The truth will set you free. The truth matters. You know we see in our news media that everything else lies. We saw the Sudan killing in, in Jacksonville. Once again, a senseless killing. Based on what they was told. And, and, and the person killed himself. Even the scripture is like, well, what were you doing? Now that person now has to go before God will go, just like all the rest of us as well. And I just hope he don't sit there and say he's looking for his advocate, but he never knew his advocate. He only knew him. He knew he died. Let's not be the same way, okay? All right. God bless you. Uh, uh, like I said, I hope you enjoy this segment and the encouragement is to continue to study. Read the Word of God. Read the New Testament for yourself. And let Christ be the example. And it's all about love. It's all about mercy. It's all about grace. Amen. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave comments. And I'll see you when I see you. God bless you. Thank you for listening. I really do appreciate it. God bless you. Bye-bye. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord.